Well, in the spirit of military helicopter flyovers, I figured that I would uh, make a video on a survivalist wood stove. And I am going to make this stove out of this old mailbox. And this mailbox isn't your average typical mailbox. This thing is super thick. I don't know if you can see that. And it's really, it's really heavy. I mean, that's, it's like an eighth of an inch thick steel. And the door, same thing. Very, very heavy. Um, I think I'm going to dra draw something up. And, uh, try to come up with a way to turn this thing into a wood stove. Something that you could heat a tent with in a survivalist situation, or a shed, or your house if things come to it. And, um, or you could just put it out on a patio or a deck and um, sit around it and get warm as well. So, um, let me draw something up and then I'll, um, I'll show you guys what I come up with. So, this is kind of what I have drawn up. Real quick, um, again, it was quick. I, it came out okay. I give you guys an idea of um, what my plan is with this mailbox. I plan on putting some type of a flue damper up here to control the burn, how, how much, um, how fast it burns. Also, um, I'm going to put a sliding, sliding vent right here. I'm going to install an access door to put wood in. And you're not going to be able to put big pieces of wood in this. And then there's also a uh, door to um, clean the ash out. I'm going to make these legs out of some pipe that I have laying around. Some galvanized pipe that I have laying around. Um, I'll probably buy the flue at Home Depot. And um, I'll probably get the, the flue mount there as well. They, they sell flanges at Home Depot. I'll probably buy the flange there too. So this is the plan. Um, I'll probably have to buy the sandal. Um, if I want to get that coil type kind of um, hand protection so don't burn your hand when you go in there but that's not a big deal, I can get that I can make these latches um, the hinges I'll probably make out of nuts and bolts and just weld them on there but it gives you a good idea of what I'm going to do and um, I think this will be quite useful it might be useful for a lot of people out there as well um, I know they do sell these tent stoves online. Uh, you can get one, not too pricey. I think Amazon has one for like a, a hundred, between a hundred and a hundred and fifty. That's uh, actually a decent stove. It's well made. Um, but I got this mailbox laying around, and I'm kind of bored. And those helicopters flying over <laughs> kind of gave me the idea of uh, making a survival stove. So that's what I'm going to do. And um, I guess. Um, I guess I'm going to start getting into it now. Well, I'll start with a little disassembly here. Uh, let's take, I guess we got to take this board off.
Well, we're all cleaned up. I cut the floor out of the mailbox, which will now be the top. I plan on moving, moving it flush so it goes, so it's flush across here. Um, a little rusty. Hit it with a flap of disc, got the edges all clean. Um, piano hinge is off, the bracket's off for that. Um, the door is all cleaned up. I gotta figure out what I wanna do with the door. Uh, I'm gonna have to lay that out a little bit, but I'll show you guys how that's gonna go. But it's all cleaned up, and we're in the starting phase of getting this thing complete. I got a dent right there I gotta try to get out. If you guys can see it, decent size. I'll bang that out. And uh, let's move on to the next step. Uh, let's see where we're at here. Um, I think at this point, this is going to be the door. Um, it's going to hinge like this to open and close. Um, we need some type of uh, an air intake on the bottom here um, so that we can adjust flow and burn in the stove. So I'm going to use, I think, this piece right here. And I'm going to make a, a sliding door here with a few holes in it um, to let air in. And I'm thinking we need a couple of holes, maybe. One like this and one like that. And these look like these are the rivets that we're holding the door lock on or door latch for the mailbox. I'll have to punch those out because I think they're aluminum. Uh, and then I'll fill them in with weld which uh, and grind them off. No big deal. Um, so we need a couple of holes. And I'm thinking maybe three quarter inch diameter maybe. So we got the step drill here. Um, if you can see it. But it goes all the way up to seven eighths of an inch. And I think this is where we're gonna go right here, which is the three quarter. And we'll punch in two holes here and there. Um, and then we'll come up with a slide. And we'll put the two holes in this as well, same distance, and then we'll have it we'll have it slide. I mean I'll put some springs in there to keep it tight against the um, the face here. Um, away from the camera a bit. So we keep it tight and it will slide to let air in. So let's work on that now. Um, I'm going to go and cut this. I'm not going to video cutting it. Um, I'm going to cut it off and uh, I'll be right back. Alright, so we cut it and it's a little easier to work with now. And I want it to slide a little bit. So I'm thinking four inches should do it. And what I want to do is, um, I think I'm going to cut it. Let me get my tape measure real quick. I use a scale, easier to handle. So we're looking at roughly four inches is what I'm looking for in length which would put us to roughly here um, what I think I want to do is I want to make something to be able to slide this back and forth with so I think I'm gonna saw it down and then I'm gonna come up like this And I'm going to bend this tab up like that. So you actually have something to pull this back and forth with, uh, to open and close it. So I am going to do that now. I'm also going to radius these corners. I'm going to do that now. And um, come back when it's done. Basically... I am just using a hacksaw right now, as you can see, just hacksaw. Nothing fancy, 
This material is not that thick, so it's pretty easy to cut. Let me go do that and be right back. All right, this is what we got. So we got a little, we got a tab on there so that we can open and close it. And basically, all I used for this was a file and a hacksaw. I hacksawed off the corners, filed them smooth, um, hacksawed down, hacksawed in, um, filed this round, and then I just put it in my vise and bent it with a ball peen hammer. Um, I didn't go f f completely 90 with it because I was worried that maybe this would snap off. I don't have any, f I don't have a fracture on that right now, um, but I didn't want to go any further. And that's plenty fine to get a grab on that. All right, so let's figure out what we want for holes. So I think we need to put this off to the side and then when it's open, it'll be over there. All right, so I think we're good. I think this is what we're going to do. This position of these holes look pretty good. Um, I think we'll have this in the open position, and then we'll put it in the closed position like that. So we'll put a hole. We'll put the holes here and here, and then on this, we'll put a hole. Actually, I don't think I can do that because I need some way to... I have this slide. Yeah, the holes are gonna have to. We're gonna have to have some type of a slot, and then a slot, and then we'll have to have the holes in the middle. Maybe I'll just do one hole in the middle. Maybe one big hole right here. All right, let me figure this out a little bit, and I'll come back. Uh, it just came from the drill press, and as you guys can see, I drilled a series of quarter-inch holes here for the slots for this to ride back and forth on. Um, I think that'll be all right. I'm going to have to change I, the way that I'm going to do this, I think. Um, I don't think I have enough room for side-by-side -side holes here, so I think what I'm going to end up doing is... Figuring out where my slots are, and I'm probably going to go this way with the slot. I think this will be better for the setup we have. And then that way there, I'll be able to block it off. So that's the plan. I'm going to go over to the vise right now. I'm going to take um, a round file or a rat tail file, whatever you guys like to call them, and I'm going to clean these out and make them slots. I'm going to go do that now, and uh, I'll be back when I'm done. Alright, that was a bit of work. So as you can see, um, the slots are in. Got a little handle on here, so this should move back and forth pretty nicely. Um, took a little bit of work. I used a combination, I think three different files. I used the round file to break the webbing, a small file to get the webbing down to a point where I could get a larger file in. Took a little bit of time. It's not pretty. Um, but it will be functional. Proper way to do it is with a mill. I don't have a mill, so use what you got. Um, quarter inch screws, they fit in there. Um, they'll slide. They'll slide back and forth, no problem. Um, they're a little long. I'm going to have them stick out on this side because I'm going to have small springs on here to keep tension on this, to keep it against this face. So it doesn't, uh, so smoke doesn't come out. So the springs will force this against that. 
and cause drag so that wherever I set it, it will stay there. So at this point now, we got to figure out where we want to put the screw holes. Um, and how we want this to look when it's open. So open will be like that, and I think closed will be centered maybe. So open, closed. So I think before we we drill the mount holes, um, I think next is probably putting the slot in this. So let's um, let's just see what this will look like. So if I have it, let's say that's open, and let's say I put a hole here and a hole here, and then we slide it. It's closed. I think that'll work. So that'll be open. Alright, so here we are. Slots in. I think that that's going to work just fine for us. You can see my marks here, mark here, mark there. Center of the slot, sides of the slot, when it's all the way over. It runs out of travel. That slot should be here and it should be fully hidden. So I think we're alright. These are the whole screws I'm going to use to hold it down. Um, this was kind of a lot of work. I don't know if anyone's filed metal before. Um, you can see that this isn't... You know, sheet metal. This is uh, an eighth of an inch thick. That's an eighth of an inch thick. So it takes quite a bit to file it away. Um, it's a lot of it was a lot of work, but I think it came out nice and it's going to work perfect for what we need. Um, these are the tools that I use. Just to give you guys an idea. Um, I use a couple of different types of files to get in there, um, and it took time. It definitely took time. Um, I rough, rough, rough drilled these out with a quarter inch drill, and I rough drilled this out with a 3 eighths drill. Um, I was only able to put two holes here, and then there was a kind of a good sized web here that I had to file away. Um, and I put multiple holes here, I think four maybe here. Um, so that's how I did that. Uh, well, man, I guess I'll show you the rest of this. This mailbox isn't uh, your average mailbox either. You can see the thickness on this. Is also an eighth of an inch. Um, the door is an eighth of an inch. Let me um, put you up top here and give you an idea of this. As you can see, I don't know if it's blurry or not, but even the wall thickness on the mailbox itself is an eighth of an inch, and the base is an eighth, as you can see. So this isn't your average mailbox, and um, that can stand there. and the reason the reason why I'm actually doing this is because um, how thick this mailbox is. Um, it's pretty heavy, and um, it's going to make I think a really nice wood stove um, tent heater slash shop heater, shed heater, garage heater, what have you. Um, I'm going to cut it off here for now. Uh, I think the video is getting pretty long. So we'll call this pot one um, of a bug out stove slash tent stove. Um, thank, I want to thank you guys for watching. I'm going to go pick up some more stuff. I got to go to Home Depot and, and um, I hope you guys can see it there. Bring you up here a little bit. Um, I got some welding to do. I want you guys to see, um, I got to weld this all together, I'm not going to do that now, um, I'll do it later, I'll video that, the, um, when I get to it, I need to figure out what I want for a stove pipe, so 
So something's going to go in here um, like that. I need to figure out what size Home Depot has available for a pre-made flange so I can weld it on here and then have the pipe coming up. But I have to go and I have to go and see what they have. Um, I don't know if it's 4 inch, 6 inch, 8 inch. I'm hoping for 4 inch. We'll see. Um, but again, more to come. I drilled a hole in the back here, as you can see. Put the slot in, put the couple bolts in, mounted that on there, and you can see that it's functioning pretty good. So we should get pretty good ventilation through the bottom of the stove now. Um, I know these are nylock bolts, nuts, I should say, and the plastic's going to melt off from the heat. Um, but for now, it's demonstrating purposes. So. I think that's going to work quite nicely. Um, not quite sure what I'm going to do with this guy yet. I haven't decided whether whether I want to leave it this full length or cut it down some. Um, there's a pretty good sized dent right here. I don't know if you can see it. Right here, pretty good dent. Looks like someone might have took a swing at it with a baseball bat at one point in its life. Um, it's right where that flag used to be. Um, I may cut it off. There's a good dent right here too. Um, I may cut it off here, make it more portable. It is pretty heavy right now. Once his legs on it, it's going to be really heavy. Um, haven't decided yet. I'll do a little bit more uh, mocking and see what happens. A little more mock up. So I'm thinking that I'm probably going to, for legs, probably going to maybe weld those on like that, which will give it um, a flat surface to mount the legs to. I might use, I might just use pipe, plumber's pipe cast iron plumbing pipe. That way I can unscrew the legs. It might make this easy, you know, more portable. Um, more to come on that. I got to take a trip to Home Depot and see what they got. Um, but that's, that's what I think the route I think I'm going to go. I think I want to have removable legs. I don't want to weld the legs on permanently. So if I mount something on here like this, which will let's see it, give us a flat surface instead of that radius. To mount mount legs to. And I could bring it out a little bit, maybe give them a little bit of an angle. Um, I think that's I think that's what I'm gonna do. And this is just, you know, angle line. And this is also one eighth thick. So this stove is gonna be really heavy when it's all done. Which is good because it's not gonna be easily knocked over either. Um, Alright, I'm gonna cut it off here. Um, we'll call this part one and um, part two is coming Maybe I got a shopping list to put together come up with a few things that I need for this um, yeah uh, a little bit more mocking I'll probably do that on camera um, in part two um, but for now I think uh, we're good I got to come up with some type of a hinge setup for the door itself um, for how, how I want this thing to swing open. I gotta put a handle on it. I'm thinking that I'd like to swing this way. Um, swing that way. Have some type of a latching handle on here with some type of a drop to catch something inside to um, keep it closed when the fire's going. Um, it'd be nice if I could find commercial items at Home Depot. Maybe I'll go online and look. Uh, save me some time and having to make fabricate all this stuff up. But um, that's where we stand. I'm going to cut it off here. I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, hopefully you guys found this interesting. And um, you'll come back for part two and possibly part three. Uh, until we get something burning in here and we cook something on top of it. Um, for now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it off. But uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hit the like. The like. Uh, button, uh, bell notification, 
share it with your friends. Um, all the help I can get from you guys passing along, greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching.